Good morning guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna flush your brake system on this 1952 Chevy pickup truck. I was gonna work on the brakes, replace the pads front and rear, but after inspecting them yesterday, I noticed that that's not gonna be required today. I'm gonna to show you why. First of all, these drums come off easily on both sides. There's a little bit of brake dust, but I don't feel any ridges, no scratches inside. They are perfectly smooth. Yep. Now, I thought that the brakes in the back would be worn out, but there's a little bit of meat on them that may be good for another six months or so. And because I want to speed up the process of starting this truck, I'm not going to work on these brakes yet. I may do the brakes later in the summer, but for now, they are good to go. I did not replace these brakes. As you know, I've had this truck since 1999 and I stopped using it in 2004. Yeah, they look like they're in excellent shape. Perfectly smooth here too. So yep, these are in good shape. I'm gonna leave them alone for now. So leave this one alone. And when I do the brakes in the future, I wanna sandblast the drums and get them painted. And this is the other side guys, the passenger side. Check that out. Again, perfectly smooth all the way around. And yeah, I'm not gonna work on this just yet. They look decent. And these are the front brakes, same deal. Perfectly smooth everywhere. And the brakes, they look almost brand new, the brake pads. There's a lot of meat there. That's a better angle. You see that? So it appears that the previous owner back in 1999 changed the brakes right before he sold it to me because they are very new and I've only put 1300 miles on this truck since I bought it. So I'm gonna flush and bleed the brakes with this plastic bottle and this 3 16th inch hose. So I'm gonna drill a hole in there so I can fit this hose in there. And this is almost the same size, slightly smaller obviously. And then I can enlarge a hole if I needed to. And then I'm gonna drill a pilot hole next to it to relieve any pressure. So guys, I'm gonna drill a pilot hole in the middle. Now I'm gonna drill the bigger hole. Will it fit? Almost. So I'm gonna use the same drill bit to, to enlarge a hole. Almost there. Oh, that's perfect. And now I'm gonna drill a pilot hole to the side of it to relieve any pressure in case there's any. There we go. So we got the big hole here and a pilot hole next to it. We're good to go. But first I'm gonna go ahead and wash this bottle out because there's some debris inside. Okay, my tool is ready. And I'm gonna push the hose in all the way to the bottom. And by the way, this is what you use for the one-man bleeding system. I'm gonna try the two-man bleeding system first with a wife, and then I'm gonna do it by myself. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and clean around the bleeder valve a little bit with this wire brush. And this one's a tiny bleeder valve. This is only a 5 16 Now the front one is a slightly bigger one. It's a 3 8 Yep, looks good. It wasn't too dirty. A little bit of surface rust. All right, I'm gonna do all the other three. And here's the other one, the front disc brakes. This one, like I said, it's a little bit bigger. Now guys, I always wondered how I was gonna access my master cylinder because I know that the master cylinder is underneath and it's been replaced. It's a relatively newer one from the 90s. Let me show you where. I found out maybe three days ago exactly how to access it. Yup. There's a cover right there, believe it or not. Let me pull this carpet out of the way. Right there. You see that tiny little hole? And it's a big master cylinder, so yeah, it's gonna be a 
it's going to be a challenge. Not impossible, but it's just going to make life a little bit difficult. But it has to be done. I got to take that lid off. I mean, I'm happy that they replaced it with a modern master cylinder. Yeah, but it's difficult to get in there. Hmm. Maybe if I open it from the bottom, or well, maybe it's easy to open up. Let me see if what I can do from underneath. There it is, guys. We're looking at it from underneath. And all the brake lines are new, newer from the 90s. And there's not much I can do from under here. So I'm gonna have to work it from above through that small hole. Maybe I can use a screwdriver to open that lid. There's one. Yeah, I can't even see the other one. Oh, the other came out as well. Now, I don't know if you can see that guy, but the other strap in the back is a challenge uh, to take off because there's a bolt at the bottom there that's holding it in place or keeping it from moving forward. So I don't know if I can take the master cylinder cover, uh, the way that strap is in there, I may be able to, but Hmm, I gotta figure this out. See that bolt all the way in the bottom? Yeah, it's not part of the master cylinder, it's part of the body, but it's in the way of the strap. See that uh, lever right there? I don't know if you can see it, cause it's kind of dark in here. See this? I can't get that off. The other one's off. But I'm gonna use the spring puller, pull from one side, and then try and lift the cover. So I got it guys. I used the trampoline spring puller and it was super uncomfortable uh, down there. I was, it's a good thing I don't have to do this very often. Maybe once every three or four years. And the reason you have to change your brake fluid often is because brake fluid is hydroscopic, meaning that it absorbs water. Uh, but yeah, there's fluid all the way up to the top. Let's look at it from above now. So there it is, guys. Yeah, it was hard to get out, but it looks a little dark, obviously, because as I explained a minute ago, it's uh, brake fluid is hydroscopic, and it probably has a lot of uh, moisture and water in it, so... We're about to change that and make it clear again. Getting fluid in and out of there, it's gonna be a real challenge. But I know a guy who knows another guy who knows another guy that told me about this tool. Hold on for a second. This thing, it's kind of like a huge syringe. I can't remember the name of it, but I'm gonna put it uh, in, uh, on the screen and I'm gonna link it below. I believe I bought this from Amazon. But with this, I'm gonna suck up some of the fluid and put the new fluid in. Will it work? We're about to see. So I wanna suck up some of this fluid, not all of it, because I wanna put new fluid on top. It'll be quicker if I take most of it out and fill it up with new fluid. Cool. All right guys, so I can use that other tool to put brake fluid into the cylinder or I can use a small funnel. Obviously, if I use the other tool, I would have to clean it first, but this small funnel, I already have it handy and it's clean. And this is a way that I'm gonna use to put fluid in there. And I'm using dot three brake fluid for this brake flush. There we go. I'm gonna make sure not to overfill just do a little bit at a time. Look at that nice clean brake fluid. Do the same to the other side. That side you're not gonna be able to see, but I can from my angle. Fill it almost all the way to the top. 
because once I start bleeding them, this is gonna go down and I'm gonna have to add more. And this is the old brake fluid. I put it in this bottle because the hose, as you can see, it's gonna go all the way down to the bottom. The hose has to be submerged in old fluid. It could be new fluid as well. That way, when you use the one-man system, obviously any air bubbles that go in will get trapped in there. Okay, let's go bleed them. So I'm gonna start flushing with the wheel that is furthest from the master cylinder. So we know what the master cylinder is, kind of like under the steering wheel. So this one is the furthest, so we have to do this one first. The second furthest is this one on the left-hand side in the back. The third will have to be this one. And you always want to do last the one closest to your master cylinder. So this applies to all cars that don't have ABS. But what if your car has ABS? You have to follow the same rules, but not from the master cylinder. You have to follow that rule from your ABS. Whichever one is furthest from your ABS, that's what you do first. All right, guys, so here it is. I already put the hose in the bleeder valve, which is a tiny valve, and I'm about to loosen it, and I'm using the two-man method. My wife is inside the car, and she's gonna help me out for a few minutes. So let me loosen it up. Okay, Maria. Okay. All right. All right. It's got, the fluid's kind of yellow. All right, let it go. Okay, Maria. Yeah, it's very dark. Go ahead and press it, Maria. Okay. All right, let it go. There we go, guys. I'm starting to get some clear fluid through, but guess what happened? Holy Jesus. What is that? Yeah, and because of that issue, the squirting, which wasn't expected, I had to put the cap back on. But this one's different, I guess. All right, guys, so it's relatively clean. It took quite a few pumps to get it there. But look at all that fluid. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this now and go to the next wheel. So it, this tells me that the back brakes are using this front cylinder here. And the front brakes are definitely using this back cylinder here. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill it up again. And now I'm gonna do the one man method. And yes, it should be easy. I'm gonna do it again, guys, on this one. Now this is very, very dirty. I emptied the bottle and I put a little bit of clean fluid. And let's do it again. There we go. I'm starting to get clear fluid through here. All right, I am done with the back brakes and look at the difference. So now this is my third wheel. This is my front uh, passenger disc brake. I'm about to start bleeding. I opened it up, nothing came out, but let's go start pumping. All right, I came out to check. Okay, as dirty as the others. All right guys, so this is the last wheel, the one closest to the master cylinder. And I'm about to pump it. Yeah, it's dirty. So I'm gonna add more fluid to the master cylinder itself. I wanna make sure that it doesn't empty out 
Okay, I'm done. And look at that dirt in here. Glad I did it. Now I don't have to do it for three or four more years. I am done, guys. Now look at how clean that fluid is. All right, guys, so I used a little bit more than 32 ounces. Normally, 32 ounces is all you need, but uh, I added, I just wanted to be cautious, and I added a little bit more than I think I needed, then, you know, my old fluid was extra dirty, and I wanted to make sure, and having the right tools really helps out. Now, if you don't have a tool like this or something similar, you can also use a turkey baster. Yes, a turkey baster. It'll do the exact same thing. Probably a lot easier because now I have to go out and clean this. If you do have something like this, make sure you clean it afterwards from all brake fluid. And now I'm gonna go ahead and recycle the old fluid. And what am I gonna do next? I think I'm gonna work on the oil pan, the oil pan issue. And I'm also going to order leaf springs for the truck. And yeah, that'll be the next project. So with that, guys, you have a good morning, afternoon, or night, wherever you are. We'll see you manana. Bye.